I'm Vinny Politan. Thank you so much for joining us tonight here on Closing Arguments. Great to have you with us. And there was big breaking news yesterday. We're going to follow up now because we need to. Um, it's the story of Madeline Soto. Madeline Soto just turned 13. Relatives hosted a party for her. Should have been an amazing day. Should have been an amazing day. When you're a child and you become a teenager, that is like a badge of honor. You wear it. You've been looking forward to it. I'm growing up. Because you know when we're small, all we want to do is grow up. And this is step one. You become a teenager. But for Madeline Soto, this was, that celebration was her last day on earth. Now that's not her father there. Make no mistake, that's not her father. That's her mother. But the man on the right side of the screen with the shades hiding his eyes, that's Stefan Stearns. He's the one who's been accused of her murder. He's the one who's been accused of sexually abusing her. He's the one accused of having all these images on his phone of himself abusing her. Hundreds of these images. And that was the monster that was in her life. Let's take a listen to the uh, state attorney. Today we're announcing that uh, Stephen Stearns has been indicted by the grand jury on first degree murder uh, for the killing of Madeline Soto. Uh, <clears throat> we presented the case to the grand jury. Uh, they returned an indictment earlier today. The death penalty in this case, uh, we have not decided to like what decision we're gonna make in that case. Uh, we're going to continue those discussions going forward and we'll let you know again uh, when we make that decision as to whether we're gonna seek the death penalty in this case. All right, so let's walk through again what happened and, and what, we, what we know and the questions that we have about the timeline here. And we begin with this birthday party. Again, it's her 13th birthday party. It's a Sunday. It's, it's at a relative's home. Um, she's posing for pictures. She's got a pretty dress on. They decorated the home a little bit. She's running around outside also, um, you know, celebrating the day. The cake is right in front of her. Now... Stephen Stearns, the man accused of murdering her and sexually abusing her, when Madeline was uh, a missing child, here's what he said about the 13th birthday party. She got a happy weekend. She just turned 13. She had a 13th birthday party. She was happy that we were all together here. And she was just very happy. She was a happy kid. She's very sweet. She's a very sweet girl. Uh, I don't know how happy she was telling her friends she wanted to go live in the woods when she was 13. She's been allegedly sexually abused since the age of eight. I don't know how happy she was. Um, now, here's Jen Soto, again, speaking to WFTV, talking about the last time that mom spoke to her daughter, Madeline. What was the last thing, I guess, that the conversation that you two had, you and your daughter? Um... We spoke about her birthday party. She had a birthday party on Sunday. Uh, she had a great time. Uh, I couldn't make it because I was working, but she had an amazing time. She was so happy with all her gifts. Uh, I, I told her good night and um, yeah, that was it. So mom says she told her good night right okay now let's go to after the party so it's sunday night now the party is over what is stefan stearns doing well check out what gray Hughes investigates dug up um he's on the app telegram at 11:49 p.m that night telegram this is an app that you use where you can communicate with people but you don't know where they are um, you can send things, everything's encrypted. It's very tr difficult to track things down, information that, that's exchanged and groups start to form. And some groups form that do things that you're not allowed to do out in the open, like child predators, child pornography, things like that. Now, I want you to take a close listen to Shannon Butler from WFTV, investigative reporter. I've known her over 20 years. Um, she knows everybody uh, down in Orlando what she told us last night about the time that Madeline was murdered. What time of day or night was it? Take a listen. 
There is indication now that she possibly was killed right after her birthday party. So if you look at that, Vinny, that would have been Sunday night, not Monday morning. Uh, sources have told me they believe at this point that she was killed possibly overnight. That would be Sunday, uh, Sunday night. That changes everything. If, if, that, if those sources are correct, that changes everything here. If she's murdered after the party Sunday night, um, let's take a listen to the way or a look at how um, Jen Soto mom and Stephen Stearns describe what happened the following morning, Monday morning after the Sunday night party. Here's what they say. Um, we begin a WFTV report. Um, Jen saw Madeline that morning. Documents show that the girl's mother told deputies February 26th that she saw her daughter, saw her daughter getting dressed for school at 8 a.m. Monday. And then Stearns took her to school. Take a listen to more of Jen Soto speaking to WFTV. We dropped her off at school, close to school. Um, she wanted to walk the rest of the way. She was uh, spotted walking uh, by the church, by the middle school uh, on the cameras. They saw her hang out in the parking lot for a little bit and then get up and leave. They didn't see a vehicle or anything else. They just saw her walk away uh, around 9 a.m. heading towards the school, but she never made it. Uh, this is another mystery is this so-called uh, grainy video from the church parking lot. But this has her hanging out in the parking lot. Take a listen to what Stephen Stern says about what happened when he dropped her off. Here he is speaking to WFTV. They dropped her off early. They could have waited longer. She looked okay. She was walking towards the school when I saw her. It was like any other day, so I went on with my day. The church across the street had some cameras and they mentioned seeing her waiting around in the parking lot for a while before moving on and that was it but it was grainy it was grainy footage and not much not much else well both of those can't be true you can't be waiting in the parking lot and walking towards the school at the same time right he said she started walking towards the school and she also, he also said it, it, it was like any other day like any other day like he always drops her off well on february 28th madeline soto's grandmother spoke to telemundo 31 orlando and she confirmed Madeline was caught on camera, but also says Stearns was dropped. Also says Stearns dropping off was unusual, not normal. Take a listen. Pero mi hija trabajó la noche anterior, el domingo, y parece que se levantó muy cansada y le dijo al novio que se la trajera. Así que no era parte de la rutina que el novio llevara frecuentemente. No, no, siempre mi hija. Y en las cámaras de la iglesia ven que hay una niña con un suéter verde donde ella se sienta en el parqueadero un rato y unos minutos después se levanta y coge hacia la escuela. Hasta ahí se sabe de ella. So that's their version of what happened that morning, right? That's what they were saying. That's what they told investigators. That's what they told the world uh, and the community as they're searching for this little girl. Well, here's what law enforcement is saying about all this. Um, take a listen um, to what the Orange County Sheriff's Department had to say about some video they found near the dumpster in the subdivision complex, gated complex, where they live. We have video evidence that shows Stephen Stearns discarding items in a dumpster in that apartment complex in Kissimmee at 735 on Monday, February 26. Detectives later recovered Madeline's backpack and her school-issued laptop from that dumpster. 7.35 at the dumpster. Where is he at 8.10? Uh, take a look. A license plate reader captured Stefan's vehicle with the Florida tag JYLL82 driving away from the school at 8.10. Driving away from the school at 8.10. Now, take a listen to what they see at 8:19, nine minutes after he's driving away from the school. Stephen Stearns moved her body in the early morning hours on that day. At 8:19, we have evidence that shows Stephen Stearns returning to the complex and Madeline was visible in that vehicle. We believe she was already dead at that time. 
Okay, let's try to break some of this down, put some of these pieces together and figure out what makes sense and what doesn't make sense. Let me bring in my special guest in Portland, Oregon, podcaster Gray Hughes of Gray Hughes Investigates on YouTube. Uh, Gray, thanks so much for joining us again tonight. Um, I want to start with that 1149 telegram. Um, from your perspective, what's the significance of that in light of what Shannon Butler's sources are telling her that Madeline may have been murdered that night, not the following morning. Well, you look at, uh, you know, you, you explained it well earlier about Telegram, and you look at that and you just think to yourself, if she died that night, what is he doing on there? And even if it was the next day, it's so close to that time, early in the morning, you wonder what he was doing. A lot of these predators uh, take images of various events that, you know, I, I don't want to, you know, even if even a uh, snuff film sometimes, I mean, it's actually very um, common. I mean, it's it's very sought after by some of these wackos. So, I mean, we don't know what he was filming and what he was doing on Telegram, but it, it's very ominous, the timing of it, uh, when you just look at it. I don't, I don't know. How, I mean, I can't really see another reason why it'd be on there that late and it's not even a really no, well-known app either right i mean we just kind of heard about it more recently and but predators have heard about it for a while it's used for a lot of other things too so i don't want to completely disparage the app altogether but um you know, it's you like anything else. This. You have this this great <laughs> yeah. technology can be used for for great things and and very uh, positive things, but it could also go in the other direction. And the people who go the other direction usually find it first somehow, some way. And I, and I think that's part of what has happened here. Um, the videos. The one thing that I, that we haven't heard from law enforcement, the the one piece, are the videos of him leaving the complex. Right? They, they talk about him coming right. back at 819. They talk about him near the dumpster at 735, which is close to the back exit. Um, but we don't hear about that. My guess is they probably have things, but just maybe haven't told us about it. But to me, that's, that will put some more pieces together here of, of that morning. Yeah, I think that's absolutely, you know, people like us, we try to put the, pin, uh, the pins in order and the timing and map it all out. And what we're missing is at 7:35, did he come back to the complex to put to get the backpack and laptop, and then put it in the dumpster, and then go back out to where uh, perhaps Madeline's body was, and then later he comes back with her. You know, we don't know uh, if he was actually stayed overnight at Jennifer's home. He could have been somewhere else, but he knew that he was supposed to take her to school. So therefore, he me he needs to make it look like uh, her backpack and laptop aren't at home because she would have needed those to go to school. So he realizes, oh yeah, I'll, I'll go there early to the house and I'll pick those up and I'm, I'll just throw them in the dumpster because she's not even alive right now. And but I need to take care of that portion because if he took her to school, the question would be, well, how come the laptop and backpack are still sitting at uh, at her home? She would need that for school. You know, so it's the it's uh, you, you, you can almost yeah. see someone planning this out, right? Because okay, if the murder happens at night, now you have hours to try to figure out. Okay, what am I gonna do? How do we how do we handle this situation? Whether it's him alone or whether or not Jen knows, we don't know. She hasn't been charged. She hasn't been named as a suspect. But you you can see the planning here. All right, we're gonna we're gonna make it look like. She went to school, like I dropped her off at school. The other thing that's odd about it, though, are the hours that he chose, because school doesn't start till like 9.30. Why would you drop a child off an hour before school? And maybe in yeah. his mind he's yeah. thinking, if, I, if it's early, there's less people there, no one's going to see me? I don't know. Yeah, and you know, they both said uh, that he was called to pick her up. Right. So that means he's somewhere else to go pick her up at home. So how does how does that fit in, too? Right. So that's why it makes it seem like, um, you know, you know, it almost feels like he stayed the night. She stayed the night, Madeline, somewhere else with Stefan Stearns. This is just a theory. And then, you know, it was like she was too tired. 
he goes, hey, how about I'll just take care of her tonight? And, you know, they've known each other for nine years, so she probably trusted him like that. And perhaps he groomed Madeline to not say anything about all the different times uh, he assaulted her. I mean, he took over 400 photographs. I mean, it's absolutely insane. So maybe he drove over there that morning to get the laptop and backpack and came in and said, oh, she's, you know, even if Jen had woke up, he could have just said, she's in the car. I'm just getting her backpack and notebook, right? Or, you know, laptop and then picks it up, throws it into the dumpster and then retrieves her somewhere. But what's weird is why does he bring her back again? To That's the, the strange one, right? At 819, police are very clear or the sheriff is very clear that there's video coming back to the complex and she appears to not be alive at that moment. So if you're near the school around 8.10 or so or driving away from the school at 8.10, why are you coming back at 8.19? And if he comes back, he's got to leave again, right? So there, there should be video of that as well because her body's not found at home. It's found like t more than 20 miles away in St. Cloud. And what, and what did he have her in the car in the parking lot for four hours? Because then he drove away, and I think it was 1.20 when the witness saw his car on the side of the road changing a tire. So what, where was she during that time? I mean, I, I don't think he would have dared at 8.19 to take her out of the vehicle and bring her into the house. No. That would be crazy, uh, right? So you would think that she just sat in that car Anybody, but maybe covered her with a blanket, but she was visible when she came in from a camera that law enforcement looked at. I mean, they have, they could see her in there, and they don't believe she was alive in that image. Unreal. Yeah. Still putting the pieces together. Yeah. Gray Hughes, great to have you on the program. Gray Hughes Investigates, uh, live streaming on YouTube. Make sure you check it out, folks. Make sure you um, subscribe to it as well so you know when he's uh, on the air doing stuff. Thanks so much, Gray. All right. The think tank is locked. They're loaded. Ekla Mercy, Philip Dubay, Judge Gail Byers. What about mom? That's the question. They've got the answer. Now. This is not normal behavior. She's not the type that would just run off. We don't know where she can be. We're scared. We just want her home. We are desperate for any answers, anything that you could do to help. I'm here for it. Just please, if, if you see my daughter, just please bring her home. I just hope you're okay, Maddie. I hope you're safe. I hope you're not hurt. hope she's okay she wasn't okay she was found dead 20 miles away from their home she had been allegedly sexually abused since the age of eight for five years by the man who's been accused of her murder mom's boyfriend Stephen Stearns but how about mom what is Jen Soto's story versus some of the evidence that police have released so far in this case. Let's take a look at Jen's story. She said she spoke to Madeline after the party. That's Sunday night. Saw her getting dressed at 8 a.m. Monday morning. She said her grandmother said, her, Madeline's grandmother said that Jen was too tired to drive and had Stearns drop her off around 8.40 a.m. About an hour before school. I don't know why you're dropping your child off that early, but um, now here's the evidence that police have in their timeline. Number one, they say she was never dropped off. There's no evidence of that. Um, they have video of Stephen Stearns dumping the laptop and backpack in the dumpster in the back of the subdivision at 7.35 a.m. They have Stearns driving away from the school at 8.10 a.m. And then they have uh, Stearns entering the subdivision on video with Madeline dead in the car at 8.19. What does this mean for mom? Because these, these facts are, they are what they are. They are videos, okay? 
They are videos versus her story. Let's bring in our think tank. Joining us tonight, criminal defense attorney Eklund Mercy. Also with us, retired judge, former prosecutor, judicial fellow at National Judicial College, Judge Gail Byers, and deputy public defender for L.A. County, Philip Dubay. Welcome to everyone. Thank you, Eklund. What about mom? I'm triggered because um, as a criminal defense attorney and as a uh, guardian at Lightham, I want to say that uh, Stefan Stearns is an anomaly, but he's not. Um, one out of five girls and one out of five boys are victims of child sexual, um, child molestation. And Madeline lived in terror for five whole years by the man who's supposed to take care of her. And we live in a world in which the human sex trafficking is a hundred and fifty dollar hundred and fifty billion dollar business and there's no supply without a demand this man was able to terrorize this girl for years so it's going to be hard to really see how she didn't know and how she wasn't aware of her child being terrorized by this man I'm triggered, so I don't know how they're going to get a jury um, that'll be able to really sit in this particular case. I don't do child molestation cases anymore because of this fact, but most importantly, it is really hard to get a jury because of just how heinous the crime is. Yeah, and it looks, it looks here you're going to have two different trials. You're going to have them... Uh, the sex abuse trial for all those images found on the phone, and then you're going to have a potential, you know, they haven't decided yet, um, mur capital murder trial with the potential of perhaps the death penalty uh, to follow. Judge Gail Byers, what do you think about mom's story versus the evidence that police have and what that means for how this case is is going to develop here? Because investigators told us yesterday, prosecutors told us yesterday, um, the case is the investigation is still open. And Vinny, I can completely understand why the investigation is still open. Um, there may be um, some question as to mom's culpability and um, her knowledge and even her potential involvement. Um, even if you accept the idea or the fact that you know, police are humans and they make mistakes and, you know, they don't always get it right in their reporting. What seems to be clear here is that there's actual corroborating evidence or information to buttress the timeline that they've put together. So they've got video evidence and they have, you know, other things that are time stamped that don't involve human manip manipulation, at least as far as we know. That means that all of that evidence and information is being placed up against mom's memory or her alleged memory um, of the night before and none of it seems to to align right so you, you can't have it both ways you can't you know see your kid getting dressed at 8 a.m and there's clear indications that your your boyfriend is dumping her backpack and laptop almost a half hour before there's no way that you can believe that this child was dropped off at school at 840 when 20 minutes or 30 minutes prior, there's video that shows her body at least in a vehicle and she does not seem to be alive. Those two can't coexist at the same time. And so either mom's going to potentially revisit her memory or she's um, either gonna be a cooperating witness or perhaps a co-defendant. Yeah, Philip Dubay, I, I, I don't you know. She hasn't made a statement since the arrest of Stephen Stearns. She hasn't made a statement since her daughter's remains were found. And you have a right to privacy. You don't have to say anything. So we don't know what her position is as to Stephen Stearns, the accused murderer of her daughter and the one who had all these images on his phone that became the subject of that first case and that first indictment, four hundred more than 400 images. Um, so I don't know what she thinks about Stephen Stearns at this point. I know when they were missing, they were like comforting each other, like on camera. You could see all that. 
but I don't know if things changed. I have a feeling that mom has lawyered up and counsel has told her to shut up and not say a word to anybody, let alone the police and the media. I have a feeling that the coroner has enlisted the help of a forensic entomologist. What's gonna really matter in this case is the exact date and time of death. A forensic entomologist can pretty much pinpoint almost down to the hour when that child died based on insect activity found on her remains in the woods where her, where her body was recovered. They'll be able to tell almost down to the hour and that is significant because remember what mom said, she said she saw Madeline getting ready that morning and that uh, Stefan picked her up and you know that whole thing. If they can show based on the forensics and based on the, uh, the insect life on that child that uh, she was already deceased, then I have a feeling uh, mom is gonna be in a lot of trouble. She will no longer just be a lead, but she may be even beyond a person of interest and possibly a suspect. I'm with Declan. I cannot believe that mom did not see behavioral changes in a child of that age uh, to suggest that, you know, everything was just fine in the house. I'd like to know what type of attitude she had at home, how she was performing in school, uh, whether or not she had friends, whether or not she was isolated. Those are the classic symptoms of somebody who is being abused. And given the age difference between Stefan and the child, I have a feeling he was what's called a herbophile, which is basically going after uh, uh, sort of post pubescent children with a wide age gap between the victim and the offender. But we'll see. It's a little premature, but they've got him on all the sex charges. He Absolutely. ain't ever getting out on those. No, you're not. He is not. Mm -hmm. He is 